sip. Hey, hey, hey. Just a little sip. Just a little sip. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and that's good for that's now. For you? Good for now. Try one of those, yeah. huh? Yeah. 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 Mine as well, right? Like. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole idea, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> we're gonna get our guests drunk. <laughs> Hello. 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 We're, gonna, we're gonna be here all night. <laughs> we're, we're gonna get some good oh, stories. All right, well, this is Sandcast, Beach Volleyball with Triborn and Travis Mawarda, presented by Marriott Vacation Club Rentals and brought to you by VolleyballMag.com. We're back in our Born on the Beach studios after a little bit of a hiatus and a quick visit to Huntington Beach earlier today with the Witt sisters. And we have an awesome guest in here today. We have another coach, but also our first Hall of Famer oh, on the yeah. podcast. Thank right. you. Mr. Thank Jose you. Loyola, what's happening? Uh, not much, man. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation to uh, have me here through this uh, podcast. It's, yeah. You guys are doing a fantastic job. You know, I'm really comfortable here. Got on the table, I got like a glass of wine. <laughs> Come on. That's like, our, like, <laughs> that's like one of our signature touches of the show. We yeah. just a little glass of wine with the podcast and we just, just a little free flow yeah. conversation. Loosen everyone up a little bit. <laughs> but I told them, you know, I was not gonna drink anything during the week. And yeah. I'm breaking my breaking my promise here. <laughs> yeah, we do. Sometimes you gotta break the rules for Sandcast. <laughs> that's a big occasion, right? Like huge, huge occasion. <laughs> yeah. And so the the season is sort of about to get underway. I don't know if like, I mean, the Hague was a little bit ago. It's hard to tell like what part of the season that was because like the beach season almost split up into two now with how early it, it starts. You have like a little preview with the Hague in January and now we're getting into full time. Uh, and you're coaching Sarah Hughes and Summer right now, I believe, right? Yes. So how's, how's the prep for Huntington going? Well, the prep for Huntington and also for China because we leave to China this upcoming Sunday the April 15th, that will be the first tournament they actually going to be playing together as a team. And uh, I think China, it's uh, one step of a preparation for Huntington Beach because uh, they certainly want to win every tournament, but winning Huntington, because that's what Sarah's from and that's what we wanted to win at home, in our homeland. Yeah. And uh, it's exciting, it's exciting to go in and to China first and just to see where we're at as a team and see what we have to make as a as an adjustment. And but we're excited. We're I, I believe we're on the right track. Now it's just a matter of time. It's good. That's gonna be a fun event. I'm I'm pretty jealous that I'm not playing in it. But getting to host or just the format alone, half AVPs. So you're you feel comfortable. You know, everyone comes home to play AVPs, and it's like you're comfortable and you just wanna just go have fun out there. But then you get have that international crowd coming in or players coming in and playing in it it's like it's basically like international players are playing in our EVP that's like sounds just like a really fun event to play I think it's only like in my opinion it just like it jacks up the uh, the level you know the competition it raises up the, the level I think the uh, having the AVP partnering up with the event with the FIVB I think they are our uh, national players they, some of them, some of them, they don't have a lot of opportunities to go internationally compete. I think this is a great opportunity for those players just to get a little taste of, just to see what it is to compete in international competition. So we never done this before. We never had a tournament in this format before, but like I said before, I think it's a great opportunity for our athletes here in the United States to just get a little taste of what the competition looks like internationally. And I'm so curious and try, I'm really interested in, in your thoughts on the format too, because we've never seen an event like this. 48 team, double a limb, international and with a heavy American slant too, with 16 American teams going to be in it, plus, you know, maybe a couple come out of the qualifier too, which that qualifier is going to be gnarly. What do you think of the format? This is just a massive tournament. <laughs> well, I, I believe so. Honestly, we never had this format before. So it's really, really difficult for any of us to mention anything. I think we, all we have to do is be supportive, you know, of the event and be, be willing to help out because once we understand that we're helping this event and we're helping volleyball in the United States, and, but as far as the format, it's going to be really interesting because uh, I hear a lot of the international players already bitching about it, you know what I mean? Like saying, oh, how that's going to... 
it's a big concern because if they do this next year, that may affect on the running for the Olympics. So there's a lot of issues that are coming up. So we just have to make sure that we don't get anybody mad and then losing the opportunity to have events like this in the United States, you know? I think right now what's important is, as the players and everybody else, to embrace the competition and then we'll figure it out if that works out or not. And I think that this is a good year to have it though because it's not an Olympic year. So I think this is almost like an experimental thing probably and that we'll see how it works. And maybe this will just be like a non-Olympic qualification type event. So we'll have it two years during Olympic qualifications. Don't have, I don't know, I think that it'll be just kind of fun to see how it works out. I think you're right about that. I think the FIVB, the, uh, certainly they, I don't think they do a lot of stuff random. I think everything they do, it's got to have to have a purpose. We don't know what the purpose is yet, <laughs> but we're going to find out. But you're right. As far as, as like having this tournament this year, which is not going to affect anything, any point towards the Olympics or any FIVB points, it's just to see maybe this is the future of the sport, you know, having more promoters willing to put tournaments in the different countries. Not only AVP, but we can go also go to Europe and have the same type of events too and bring more money to the tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Maybe, maybe FIVB is just kind of testing it out and seeing if it works and then they can open it up to all the other domestic tours around the world. Not that there's that many, but Brazil has a very successful domestic tour. Well, and Europe Brazil does too. Now. Europe, yeah, Austria, right. Germany. There is so many countries there, they can afford it to have a national tour. Maybe by doing this, you, you open up the doors for more promoters to come in and, and yep. invest in the sport. I think it's good. I mean, there's definitely the things that don't make sense about it. And there's reasons why the international players aren't happy about it is because look how many U.S. teams are getting an opportunity to get FIVB points. Whereas the lower level teams, like the teams that are 5 through 10 or whatever, aren't getting that opportunity in other countries. So it's it's a definitely a benefit for the American players, but FIVB does a lot of stuff that we don't understand, so we have to take advantage of this <laughs> yeah, opportunity. Uh, and in my opinion, I don't see this as being an advantage or disadvantage for the American or international players. This is just another tournament. And if you're a player, you don't have to choose and pick what you want to do or not. You just have to go out there and play. You know, there's no excuses, you know, oh, the FIB is doing this, the FIB is doing that. Just get out there and play. You don't see the top players complain, making it, you know, any point. They just want to get there and play. And I think, too, what, I mean, a mindset of most of the top players is that you want to play against the best, right? And now we have 48 teams in a main draw. You're going to get a crack at every good team in the world. But that's what I said. Well, well but that's what I said earlier, though. It only... It's going to raise up the level of our of our national players. Yeah. That's how people have to look into it, looking on the positive side. You know, what do you rather have a qualifier with a bunch of kids that are coming from the United States, but you, then you have a tournament that in the qualifier, you, like you said, you have the little taste, the little crack to play against international teams, mm -hmm. bringing the the uh, the extra flavor. Yeah. <coughs> Bottom line is. It's a huge opportunity for a lot of players, and you can look at it how you want, but like you said, you got to look at it as a positive, take advantage of the opportunity, and because it might not happen again, or maybe this is going to be a new, a new thing. And, and that's one thing that, that I was thinking, because, so I'll be in the qualifier, and most of my friends and the guys I play with out here will also be in the qualifier, and a lot of them are saying that they didn't want to sign up because what are the chances that they get through, but... I would love to play against, say, an Alvaro or Simon if they're in it. You know, I think it's because, like, I'm not at a point where I'm going to be traveling internationally anytime soon, so this is the only chance I'll have for a little bit to measure myself against an international team. I think it's an awesome stage to have. I don't, I've never understood the mindset where, oh, well, there's no point because we're just going to get our ass kicked. I think <laughs> you're nailing on the answer. You have to measure your stage and to see where you're at. Because right. if you want to continue in the sports, if you want to do become a professional volleyball player. This is it. This is the true test that you have to go through. And you, if you're going to win on the big stage, you're probably going to have to lose on the big stage first. So go out there and, and go measure measure yourself up against the best in the world. It's <laughs> yeah, a good way to put it.
And speaking of measurements too, so we haven't, we have yet to see Summer and Sarah play together. Uh, how would you evaluate them right now? I know, I know partner chemistry takes a minute to, to get together. I think the, uh, the fact that they're both are pretty similar as far as with the age, and, the, uh, and they, these girls are know each other since they're young, because I believe that Sarah and Summer, they compete and won FIVB, each, each one won World Champions. So they already had that little experience of playing together. But now it's a com completely different spectrum. Now they're coming and walking into the professional level. Now it's a different story. This is like, this is matter now. This is no longer each one ones. This is the, like the stuff we've been talking about, this is the measurement. That's how we're gonna measure a team. I think for us, the chemistry is gonna come when they start competing more. I think there's nothing better than the competition to teach you how to communicate because bottom line, you, you're gonna have to communicate while you're playing, right? So a lot of times you do have communications you do on during training, you do a lot of drills, you can reinforce that, you can work on that, but the realistic comes when you compete and this is when you have to learn how to communicate during the pressure of the game and the only thing that can teach you how to communicate is just the game alone so for us it's been really like anxious to waiting for this four weeks to go out there and compete you know mm -hmm. we're pretty anxious all of us you know and we're very excited though i think that's the most important thing how do your nerves compare to you were a player at the top for a long time how do your nerves compare as a coach versus a player because i'm sure it's very different because i know that you now i've coached like young basketball teams before right and it would drive me insane when they didn't do something like when they ran the offense wrong for example and i'm sure that you have plenty of that where you just look at them and you're just like no you can do that at a better level yeah well but this is <laughs> this is one of the things you have to learn when you become a coach well first of all in order for you to completely turn yourself into a coach, you have to kill the player that's inside of you. And for me right now, I think this is already happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the player is already dead, so now it's only the coach. You know? And this is how you, you understand that things that, that I used to do before, I know some of my players are not going to be able to do it now. Maybe now, maybe in the future they will. So you've learned how to be a little bit more patient. You learned that there's ways you can teach them to go that direction. It's just patient and timing, you know? That's what takes it. Yeah, I can't imagine if, if I had to go out and coach. I think I, <laughs> the player is definitely not dead. <laughs> it's, it's not, yeah. Let's do it. Just like, it's not that hard. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's very simple. And with the... Um,